Welcome to the next video in our series on building a database-backed web application. Up until this point, we've created a web server, we've added some code to be able to read from a database, we've added the jokes in our database, and then we've able to uh, show them on the screen using a little bit of code in PHP. And now we're going to read specific jokes from our table, not just the entire list. And so we're going to search in our database for all the jokes that have the word chicken in the question. So let's do a section here and copy this information and make one modification. We already know that this section is useful for connecting to the database, reading all the rows in our table, and printing them to the screen. So it'll be very similar to what we want to do next. Now before we close the database, we're going to do another query. So I'm going to insert some spaces here and pastes. Now this section here we're going to say search the database for the word chicken. Actually in this database we don't need to reopen the connection so I'm going to delete lines 45, 46, and 47, 48. That initializes the connection to the database. So since we haven't closed the database yet we can create another query and this time we're going to just add something to the end of it. So this says select the joke ID, the joke question, the joke answer from the jokes table. Now we're going to add one more thing to our SQL statement. We're going to add a WHERE statement in capital letters, WHERE, and we're going to say where the joke question contains the word chicken. So joke question is what I type next. So remember joke question is the field that holds the joke question. And the word that we're going to have is LIKE. So you can look all this up on the SQL documentation, but I'm just going to give you a few commands to get you started. Now this will find any joke that is exactly like the word chicken. We want to put a wildcard character in front of chicken though, so that way it will allow it to have characters in front of the word chicken. Also, we're going to put the same percent sign behind chicken. So that means anything that contains this segment chicken in it is a valid search. Let's add a note on the screen so that the user know what's coming. So I'll do an H2. So inside there we'll say show all jokes with the word chicken. Let's save this and refresh our page. Now you see we have an error and I made a mistake here by including HTML code inside my PHP section. Remember earlier in the lessons, we have this section here called PHP. If I want to interrupt that with a um, HTML code, I'm going to have a problem. So I have to remember that I'm supposed to echo this statement out to the screen, and that will allow the PHP code to do its work. So let's save that and try again. There, so now you can see my title shows all jokes with the word chicken, and sure enough, it, it found only joke number two and joke number five. And so both of these contain the word chicken in the question. Now you'll probably find that this is not a very useful query. How many times do we need the word chicken? Well, as many as the user wants. And so what we really should create is a way for the user to type in a keyword or a search term and let the database return that to us. So we'll save that for the next video. But here's something that's probably just as important to our code. Our code is getting long. We have up to 69 lines in our code. And it's time to start splitting up the code into sections. We're going to use this section up here as our first example. What does this do? This is the connection to the database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight those lines. It looks like, what, five lines of code with a few comments. I'm going to cut them out. And I'm going to start a new document. And in this new document, I'm going to put in the PHP command and then paste my work. And let's save this. Now, when we save this, we're going to give it a different name. Instead of index PHP, I'm going to call it uh, database connect.php. And so this code here can be used in many different modules, we'll call it. So back in our original index page, we have to refer to that new file so it will make the connection for us. And so, so I'm going to type this word include, and that will allow us to include another file. How did I spell that file? db underscore connect 
Python.php. Here's another way to clean things up. Let's take our work here that we've done for this and let's cut that out. Let's make that into a new file. And so we'll make this another PHP document. So I'm going to type in PHP and then inside there paste my work. And what does this code do? This is a code to search for all results in our table. So let's call it um, search all jokes. And PHP is our extension. Save it. So now we need to include that as well. And that is called search all jokes and PHP. So our work is going to look smoother. It's going to look much more neat. Let's cut this one out. And let's go to our new document and let's create a new PHP page. And I'm going to cho choose a different word here. I'm going to search, uh, search keyword. Okay, and so now back to our original and we'll choose include and search keyword PHP. So I have made my index file much more readable. So we have this database connection, then we search all jokes and we search for a keyword, which in this case is chicken. So my code really has just been reorganized. Let's see what happens when I rerun it. I should get the exact same results before with no errors, but now I have these three different support files. And the reason why you do this is because PHP can become very long, your pages can be hard to read, and this is also reusable. So if I want to reconnect to my database, I can always use this code here. I mentioned at the, about the middle of this video that we're going to make this into a keyword search, not just for chicken. But this module here, this one called search keyword, will search for any word, not just the one that's hard-coded into here as chicken. So that's coming up in the next video.